It's Podcast Friday! We have a special guest today. He's a former Kaiser Chiefs player, former Sundowns player, former Bidvids player. He also played overseas. Oh, sorry. Vist University player. Um, he's in the studio with us. We'll introduce to him in just a while. The regular guys are here. That was Nadim's voice you're hearing. Mark is coming live from Cape Town. So we'll be touching base with the guys as well. There's a lot of things to discuss here. We had Ola Mlambo, who was in the studio yesterday, had a lot to say. On Tuesday, was it Tuesday? No, on Wednesday, we had Veli Mortra here. Had a lot to say as well. We're going to reflect on Bafana Bafana over the weekend with Hugo Bruce as well. And then we'll throw forward to this weekend, not the PSL games as much, but the CAF Champions League matches. Because Tanzania right now is crazy with football this weekend. They are blessed to have amazing fixtures and games this weekend. So we'll touch base on what's happening there as well. We'll touch base with Opta Jabu just to get some stats on this weekend. It's Podcast Friday. I can't wait to introduce to you the man with the hottest podcast right now when it comes to football. The road to the Metro Fame Awards. You've heard the nominees. We play them here. Make sure that you get involved, get your tickets and get ready to chop down uh, to Mbombela. Hey, I'm excited because... One of the guys, um, well, well, the guy that's joining us today, because the guys are the regulars here, mm. is uh, a person who, as a professional, I admire. As a player, um, I thought he was an outstanding professional. I watched him growing up in the same neighborhood with him. I used to watch him as a kid mm-hmm. running up and down, doing his jogs and his training uh, to see the career he had and to see him here now. Is, is something else but let's begin perhaps with the regular guys and i've got mark haskins all the way from cape town mark welcome you in cape town yeah 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 um thanks uh Andile. great to be here once again um and uh, covering football still uh, you know doing my duty uh covering the game and looking forward to what the weekend holds some great youth uh, football on the go well, where exactly are you watching youth games uh where are you scouting well, it's the Bay Hill, uh, the Bay Hill tournament. That's a 55-year-old tournament, which is uh, remarkable in itself. Uh, I played this tournament. Uh, I think it was in the year 2000 uh, with Cosmos. We came down to play this tournament, and I get to cover it. And you know, just looking at, uh, looking for the next uh, gem in South African football. So if you're out at the Bay Hill uh, tournament or if you've got your, your kid, your niece, uh, anybody that's out there, make sure your nephew um, that they do well because uh, there's eyes like Mark Haskin, former Swallows uh, midfielder as well as uh, former Vitzman. Hey, there's a lot in common between him and him. Uh, but we'll go to that because Swallows together, Vitz together, but we'll go to who he is in just a bit. Nadim Lukel, a statistician, researcher, is also here with us and just Mr. Controversy. Nadim, welcome. Mr. Controversy, no, no. Oh, yeah, Andy, it's good to be here. Have yeah. a good week? Yeah, I know. Had one. Looking forward to so many games over the weekend, especially Man City, Arsenal, Sundowns, Yanga. Yeah, it's going to be a busy weekend. Well, we'll get straight into that. But right now, please help me welcome former Kaiser Chiefs, almost 120 games with Kaiser Chiefs, six games, if I'm not mistaken, with Bafana Bafana, yeah. Vitz, Swallows, um, gee, was, and not Vitz, 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 Vitz University Vitz. player. Yeah. Mm. It's just another! You see, you see. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> podcast himself. Yes, I'm a brother. Hey, you're doing big things. You've got your own podcast now. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it's crazy, man. I, I, I remember when, like, uh, the guys approached me like three years ago and like you know they said like we're we planning something we'd like you you like you to be part of it and three years later they came through and they're like you know we're gonna start this let's go you know and what's the podcast called uh isn't just a game <laughs> and well, what's the so, basis of it what do you guys talk about uh well we just we, we get to invite basically all forgotten like legends players that have been in a game and yeah. a lot of people don't know about a lot of yeah. people have forgotten about mm-hmm. and there's so much like you know um about footballers we only know footballers just on the ball on the screen playing mm. football but we don't know where they come from so we just wanted to change the mindset of, of a fan sitting out there blaming players on like you know spending a lot of money wasting money and all of that but understanding that they are human beings as the well. stories exactly. beyond 90 minutes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, not only in football you know we can personal as well personal, we can invite like you know cricketers we can invite rugby players yeah. so this thing can be like big it's up to us to actually like you know expand it the way it has to be Rudolf Gardner is the latest one that they've got go check it out we'll give you all the details of where you catch just a that is in just a game right now though it's a podcast of a different kind it's a podcast Friday let's go into it gents a lot happened this week and we want to just break it down and go to it step by step. Uh, firstly, Hugo Bruce and Bafana Bafana obviously playing the two games over the international break window. And he's come out and he said he's been impressed 
by some of the players that he saw there. Have a listen to what Hugo Bruce had to say. Without uh, saying names, I uh, think there were some players who convinced me. I think they will be there again in June. There were some others uh, they didn't uh, disappoint me, but I think maybe it was for them a little bit too early. And it is, it is, uh, it is normal, younger players, um, you bring them, but then you see that it's maybe a little bit too early. It's okay, the level is higher, <clears throat> they have to adapt a little bit. Two games against Andorra and Algeria, 3-3, a classic match against Algeria. Tembam Shishis won it, just fantastic in that game. Mm-hmm. The first game uh, against a very lowly ranked 164th Andorra, 1-1 is how that ended. Two draws, no victories, but a lot gained by South Africa. Coach Hugo Bruce, Mark, says that there are players that he saw that he'll definitely be calling up again. And there are players who, they didn't disappoint him, but didn't quite impress him. Who would you think are the ones that impressed him? Well, I think the obvious name that jumps out at you is Elias Mokwana um, over the, you know, the two games, getting a goal and an assist. Uh, well, you know, the, the second one, I would give him the goal. I, I, you know, the jury's still out on that, I guess, whose goal it goes to. Does it Ikram Reina's or is it uh, Mokwana's goal? Um, but I think he's been fantastic and uh, he, he did really well. Uh, acquitted himself well to get a goal on debut. Definitely warrants another call-up. Um, so he certainly, I think, uh, put up his hand. Uh, you know, the other guys who, who came in, especially in that game against Andorra, it was always going to be difficult because it was uh, basically a, pretty much a fresh team, a new team. Everyone, you know, given a chance uh, to, to show themselves. But it's always difficult when you're not coming into a set uh, squad. When you look at Oswin uh performance in the game against Algeria, Algeria he, yeah. did, he did really well. Um, but that's because he was playing with a team that was set. And, you know, those are more the regulars in the team. Um, so it's always going to be uh, harder when all of you are basically new uh, to the team. And if you look at the Andorra lineup, none of those players are really regulars in, in, in the starting team. So it was always going to be difficult for them. Okay. Magwana comes up there uh, as well as uh, Paulus. Josta? Yeah, I mean, I- a lot of a lot of people were like just raving about Apollos and like mm-hmm. just saying like you know the technique and how the boy wanted to play, he wanted to be part of the the game. Like you know, just when I've never seen the boy play. I know he's been in the squad, but he didn't play. Like you know, at, at the half court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know that that also like comes with 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 the experience when you go with the team and they sit you out. They don't even like involve you. And the time you get a chance, you've had a feeling. You've kind of like craved to be part of the team. And he came out like you know, obviously like showing people that you know what, I might have not got a chance in uh, uh, in Afcon, but now I've got a chance to prove it to, uh, to a coach that he didn't make a mistake by calling me into the national team. Mm. You can only like raise up your hand to the coach when he gives you a chance like that. And you think Apollos grabbed it? Now he grabbed it, you know. And obviously you got trainers. For me, we needed a player like that. And Mahopo was there. We saw what he could do, but I think for me as a nine, like he's scared of like getting hats from the back, mm-hmm. protecting the ball. And when you look at South Africa, how he plays, normally they want like a basic number nine who's going to hold and obviously feed off them, feed off that mm-hmm. number nine. And then Mahopo and uh, uh, who's the other striker that plays for Pirates again? Uh, Lepasa. Lepasa, Lepasa, Lepasa didn't yeah. do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to add up another player that I would like to see mm-hmm. there. Mabaso for me yeah. would actually so be a, that, that missing a puzzle for the national team so that yeah, you have like uh, the players feeding off him. So yeah. you think Lepasa and Mahopa have uh, an issue now that Ekrem Reynas has played? You think it's going to be a challenge yeah. to get into that team? Yeah, well, Mahopa might survive because he's got that goal. You know, but I don't see Lipasa coming back. But uh, Reynas, we need a player like that. He, he's always looking for the ball. He's always looking for the ball behind the defense. Mm. He's always like you know linking around that box, getting the chance. If you get a chance, three out of get, three out of uh, 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 three chances, he's gonna score two chances. So you need a player like that. But for me, Mabaso needs to be in the national team to go help out. You, you know me. I have a soft spot for Zakele. So you know, uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna move it along. I'm gonna move it along. Yeah. Nadim. Yeah, yeah uh, the interesting part is that what I liked about this selection is that the two players who have been performing this season, who have done well for their team, is Mokwana and Reynas. Reynas was a man of the match in every match when they won the calling, and he's been the best player in the piece. And I did say even before the Afcon, I feel he should have went to the Afcon, but now the coach has decided to bring him in. Rightfully so, he deserved that call up. It was not even a favor. I think he justified his selection, his form. Of course, he's not used to play with Bafana Bafana setup. I would believe that in the next time he's going to do better than this. And Mokwana, it's one of those players at Sukhune, even scored against Parade, scored against Sundown. It's been brilliant for, actually, if you can look at him. Mokwana, you be, I believe that he actually deserved to be actually given another chance for, for what he did. Th- those are the two that I feel they did stand out. 
Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I, I want to some names. Who didn't impress? Sports Night Amplified with a delay on Metro FM. Olam Lambo, former TS Galaxy midfielder. I was confronted to say the coach says you are no longer part of his plans and they are terminating the contract. Apparently your relationship with the coach has been broken. How did you break your relationship with the coach? It was a fun day, football tennis. And the coach was were cheating us and then I moved on the side, did call. Like so Kola, you saying to me, you guys are playing the football tennis. The coaches are cheating you. You call them out for it to say, I need a rope, and you move aside. I've seen it happen when a person does not agree with the coach and they found themselves without employment. Is he had a good coach? To me, I think he's in his learning phases. Is he a good person? I've never witnessed that. At least you've got the money that TS paid you as the rest of your contract for the cancellation of your contract. You'll be fine <laughs> until... Wow, <well, I'll> <laughs> Which money, Andil? Don't you get compensation for the... terminated the contract and they are claiming that I wanted to terminate the contract. 6 to 7 p.m. 24 after the hour 6. That was uh, my conversation yesterday with Colum Lambo, but we'll get into that in just a few. Very quickly, uh, Mark... The coach mentioned players that he didn't say that they didn't impress him, but he says they're not quite maybe ready for this level. Who do you think missed an opportunity with this Bafana Bafana team? Well, you know, obviously the country will continue speaking about Kanisa uh, uh, Mayo um, and his readiness to perform for ba- Bafana as opposed to his club form. Um, I think it's very clear that the coach wants to play a certain way uh, in Bafana Bafana and maybe it doesn't quite suit uh, the way that Kanisa Mayo plays. Mm. Uh, you know, but it, having said that, uh, it was always going to be difficult. As I said, that Andorra team was not a set team. It was everyone uh, from different clubs playing together for the first time kind of thing. And it was always going to be difficult to, imp- uh, to impress in that one. Um, I think someone like Goodman Mosele, uh, you know, I think there's still something missing there. And I don't think he, 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 he's quite ready at that level. Uh, purely because uh, even when you look at when he came on against Algeria, it's almost like he's over-eager um, and he's almost trying too hard. And as soon as you look like you're trying too hard, it almost comes across as you don't belong. Um, and so, uh, you know, probably the two names that jump out for me. Oh, just a- it's got to be, I mean, the coach was only complaining about one player. I think for me, like Mayo. Uh, a lot of people are like no maybe he doesn't like him or whatever but if you have a coach that's giving you a chance and then he comes out he says you come in in and out of the game five minutes you're in the game and you're out for three minutes that actually like as a, uh, as a player I know that I was told that there was one point that I was doing that coaches don't like that you need to be all the time in the game you can't switch on and off and you know? Hugo said that about yeah, Kanye yeah. a couple of times so it's either he's Telling him to kind of go out there and fix this problem or else you're not going to get a chance again. So if if I'm a player, hmm. I'm going to go out there and be like, okay, listen to the coach and work on that. Probably that's his mistake. He's a good he's a good player. He's scoring goals for Cape Town City. We know that. We know Sundance was interested in him. But uh, for me, you can never be a nine that comes in and out of the game. Can you say again? Nadine? I'm not sure if Maswang I impressed as we thought he will. Because before I think it's because of... Yeah, I mean the, the 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 last three four games he played as well before yeah. the national team and games. the hype also that oh, was yeah. said that he might replace. <laughs> I him like him by the way as well. I like that yeah, boy. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So he in never the, made it. Yeah, I I don't know that he did because if he did, the coach was gonna put him or start him in the second game or give him a chance that one. I don't think he did impress the coach. Also, I don't think he played like the way we were hyping him that he's ready to take over from Tembazwane. We saw what Tembazwane did with the oh, two yeah. spe- spectacular goals. It was as if Tembazwane was told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but what position What position was he playing? Probably they were playing him differently from what, where Pirates is playing. It might be because the Pirates plays slightly on the left. It looks like he was playing as a number 10 ah. in, in, in the national team. Nah, Again, yeah. that, that, that was one of the things. Mm. But I just think all the guys, they try their best because it's always difficult if you are putting a new different team just like he did against Andorra then now he put his A team other coaches they will want to maybe experience a mix giving them the feel of playing with the senior players like Mkwena and Zwane if you are putting a new different team then it's always difficult for other players to acclimatize My, one might say maybe Mayo if he was playing with experienced players he was gonna like Zwane who are, he was gonna play better was gonna get a better supply of which he didn't to get in that game against uh, Andorra. It's one of those matches, but I honestly think the guys were given a coach. It's up to the coach to give them more chance again, just like he did to Lipasa, Mahoba, who we felt they don't deserve to be in the national yeah, team, but they ended the up niche, like... It cost us the Afcon, Baba. That no, they didn't. One will say they, 
like Mohaba scored against Morocco. I mean, that was a key goal. One will say he is the reason Bafana Bafana went to the semis again. Lepasa, one will say is the reason Bafana Bafana went to the Afcon. So you won't say maybe the coach was wrong in selecting them, but you feel that the guys on form, they deserve a better chance. Just like Reynas and Mugwana, we right. saw what happened if you give players uh, uh, on form a chance. Let's move on. Um, I want to tackle Golam Lambo. Golam Lambo was here yesterday. Mm-hmm. We had many conversations about his career. We you know, celebrated what he did in 2016 uh, when he was part of that uh, Bidwitz team under Gavin Hunt who won the league, went into the continent, who beat Sundowns in Bombela by mm-hmm. three goals. He was a pivotal member of that team. But also, we spoke about the reasons why he left. And I think this is what stands out. Why he left TS Galaxy. Have a listen to Colum Lambo. To me, I think he's still a learning coach, according to my opinion. I mean, he does not have any history, so we cannot guarantee or warrant him being a good coach as yet. He's in his learning phases. He's speaking about his coach, or his former coach, Sia Dramovic, there, saying that he has no pedigree, no history. He's a learning coach. But I mean, this was after the context is, you know, the coach let him go because they were playing a game during a team building session. The coach was cheating and he kept saying things like, hey, if you keep complaining about my cheating, I'm going to fire you. I'm your coach. And which he then walked away from that thereafter, you know, he got released from the team. But I asked him, what do you think of him as a coach? I mean, if you think about what Villa said as well when he left, what do you think, Nadim? I honestly think that Colum Lambo, he must get a team because he's a very good player. I know him from Orlando Pirates. He did well. He's the kind of guy, him and Monare, they were so influential in Pirates. Actually, before him, it was him and um, that team, Ocastin Molenga, Shonga, that team that nearly won the league. They only, sometimes won the league with one point. Lambo was so instrumental. He just need to get a team. I'm so worried about him talking. We've mm. seen people who are coming in this show and talk. Eventually, now they don't have a team like Mpoma Gola. He said the truth, what happened to Cape Town City. And then now he's struggling to get a team. I honestly want him to get a team. I know it's unfair. It sounds unfair what happened at TS Galaxy. That's why I was even asking myself, is this the same team Sugas was an agent representing players? If you can treat players like represented this. the very same player. Exactly. Buddy. It's so painful. But you just want, you feel he's too young. He's an excellent player. He's so talented to be without a team. You just need to get a team. I, I, I didn't like what he said about the coach that he's still learning and all those kind of things. I think it's unnecessary. It might give him maybe... A disadvantage. But he was answering a question. I asked it. Yeah, he should have just said uh, no comment. The way I see it, because now another this man's gonna ruin my radio show. This <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, honestly speaking, I saw what happened with yeah. Pomacola. I fear for him because Pomacola came here, spoke about Cape Town City. Yeah, uh, spoke about the fact that he wanted to play, and he got a job a week later. And then eventually, and then he moved to Polo And then eventually, after, so, after, come after, on. after Polo Kwan, he didn't get a team. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm but saying I, is, you can't credit it to us. How? No, no, I'm not crediting to it. I'm just saying players, the things that they say. They, they, you remember when... Uh, so what, players can't say what they feel? You remember what, when what? Ozil, Ozil, Ozil left Arsenal? They were, he was so he was ill-treated. He was even derogated from the team. But he didn't say anything because he still wanted to play. Other coaches, other team owners, they don't like when you speak too much while before they sign you. All right. they, they, they just feel like, okay, even I Ozil said, that. Ozil said, I will say most of the things about what happened to Arsenal once I retired. So I can respect that. I, I just feel people must people must not hold things in. I think I just want him to get a team because I know he's a good player. Chester? When I mean, uh, when I, as a presenter, I think you want all the juicy stuff. I want, no, I want the truth. Yeah, you want the truth. But yeah. I think as a professional, being in a professional setup for so long, mm. um, with no disrespect to Kola, what, what he said, you know what I mean? That's that's him. You had Veli before that, right? Mm. Veli, you can see how he spoke about his, as much as you tried to put him on under pressure to say negative stuff and whatever, he kept on being positive positive and you get like uh, a yeah. who comes in and says says it calls it like mm. as it is you know yeah but and is it a bad thing to say a coach is still learning no it's not a bad thing but i think there's certain things that Once you, don't, you don't say on radio fine. you don't say on radio because what whatever that you say on radio might you might never ever get a job because of what you say on radio and you know it you know and for me I understand where he come where he comes from because i was in that situation at once i played yeah. for ddc before just that i played for ddc I remember I scored the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and there was reasons. I, I was not happy to be there. And I could see that I was being sabotaged and all the, those type of things. But I make sure... And Nature Renan? 
Ah, no, I'm not saying anything. That was a chief. <laughs> yeah, just that chief, was a chief. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Nature and whatever. But I was never going to come back and like, you know, rubbish the team on radio or on TV. While you're still playing. While I was still playing. Now you've got a chance even, in your platform. Even if I'm, uh, even if, even, even after now, I could never say like talk bad about a certain individual that makes sure that destroys my, my career. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like you need to be really careful because your mouth can actually like destroy your career. Or like make anything. it. Or make, it as well. or make it yeah, uh, I mean here's a person who represents players now uh, Mark is out in Cape Town looking for players at the Bay Hill tournament as it stands now Mark talk to me you heard what Kola had to say in its entirety about his release from TS Galaxy a talented player this one what do you make of it yeah I, I, I personally wouldn't advise any player to you know to go on a public platform and, and you know speak the way that if whether it's true uh, whether it's not whatever the case may be um, there's certain things that you know you have to keep to yourself especially um, if you still want to play and you're still active as a player um, I think it's true what uh, Nadim is also saying that uh, you know it can kind of come back to bite you because we know that this is a public platform and a lot of teams listen in um, and immediately, you know, when you're airing dirty laundry or whatever the case may be, um, it, it's caught a negative light on you as a player because then how can any other team kind of, you know, trust you with... But uh, I, 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 then, I then wonder, Mark, and this goes to the three of you, mm. how do you ever change the status quo of ill-treatment, mistreatment of players, of people in football if nobody I was, ever... What I, was, what I wanted to get to, though, is that... Um, I what I what I always loathe is how expendable players are. Yeah, That's yeah. one thing we need to address. Um, the fact that players, uh, you know, are released at the drop of a hat. Um, you know, where contracts are not honoured purely because a player has fallen out of favour or whatever the case may be. Those are the things we need to address. And um, you know, those kind of things that lead to players saying these kind of things as well. And it's obviously not frustration and. Um, we've all been there where you know you're not happy with the way certain yeah. things are done or He's how you treat it, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that can't be allowed and I mean the fact that a contract can just be cancelled based on um, you know a player not being happy with what happened at a team building session um, those are the things we need to address with urgency that cannot happen but then how do you then if you're saying that if you're still a current player mm. You, you, let, let, let's, I mean, it's, it's a very one sided story, mind you. This is Kola's version of the story. There's, there's a TS Galaxy story, there's a Sea Drum of its story, but let's say we go with Kola's version for now, right? Mm. If you got fired for something like that and you're ill treated for something like that, and uh, Sophie Lagazi, who has been an, an absolute professional his whole career, comes out and says the things that he said as well. How are you ever going to get a change for young players that are coming in if you have to wait till the end of your career when that coach is no longer even coaching? If somebody had never come out and said that, uh, uh, well, what's the coach's name? We spoke to him here just the other day. The one cheaper wanted who called uh, black players look monkeys. Look in, I mean. Email. Em- em- yeah. You know, if, if, if those players and those teams never came out and said, hey, this person called us monkeys, for instance, because we're black, how do you ever then get a change in status quo? The truth is European society, football society, is totally different from ours. You know, so, I mean, senior players in South Africa, there's, there's a lot of stories that you'd hear out there but these guys can't talk because nobody protects the players in South Africa I don't think uh, the football like you know what players association is doing like you know enough to protect the players no, because yeah, normally no, no. if I'm going to go out uh, out of 11 players and I complain about something in the team and I'm being sidelined I've seen that players don't are never going to say we're not going to play the game if just is not p- part of the team the European mentality is totally different saying that coach if you bench this guy we're not going on the field we want this guy coming back so I don't I don't see the unity so there's a, there's a lot more player power yeah yeah, yeah 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 player power and the, yes in the in the respect the coach respects more the players and like here in South Africa it's totally different where like the we know the coach has got decides who he wants to play or not but I think the power here is based on the management and the players that uh, and 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 the coach than the players all right, let's move on. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this topic here. Vinny Mortra came on um, on Tuesday. Uh, we had a great conversation with him. And he spoke about, and perhaps we should have done the second, Temba mm-hmm. Now, this has been a big talking point on Temba with many saying, guys, 
you know, you're saying Tampa Zwane has been the most consistent player in the last 10 years, but has it been 10 years or has he peaked just in the last three, four uh, seasons that we've been seeing him? But before we go into it, here's Veli Moto. Ah, that guy's right. Uh, you know, in training, um, it's someone else, had, but in the game, totally different person. He's a guy, you know, each and every session from that guy is different. When it comes to the game, it's above 200%. percent Shigabala is Shigabala. So there's no one that can be Shigabala. You can ask each and everyone in the team. They will tell you, oh, that guy is special. And he has, uh, he has a lot to offer for national team. He has a lot to offer for Mamele Sanda. Like that guy still has a long way to go. But now, now Shigabala is Shigabala. He's our hero now. He's playing so much and he's playing so nice. We, we love Shigabala. Actually, personally, even me, I think I love <laughs> He's a generational talent, a once-in-a-lifetime type talent, um, is Tim Bazwane. And when he says you can ask the other players, you saw the video that trended uh, mm. after it. All the players in the changing room singing the song they always sing to Tim Bazwane, acknowledging him. Mm. You, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. You know, I, I've never seen something like mm. that in local football anyway. But there it is, Tim Bazwane. There's many angles here. There's, you know, he doesn't train the way he plays. This was <laughs> one of the things that he says. He's an amazing generational talent. But also there's... You know the age factor in it. You can pick of those which you want, yeah. Mark. Uh, yeah, and there's not enough uh, words to describe uh, Mbazwani and what he's done. And you know what I love about him is uh, he doesn't change. He's consistent. Um, you look at you know how he wasn't really uh, part of the plans uh, initially uh, for Coach Hugo Bruce. He, he was unfazed. He almost seemed unfazed about it. Um, he continued performing, continued being the same Temba Zwani we've uh, grown to know and love. Um, and that consistency is what is really remarkable. You know, in his earlier years, he was sent out on loan. Uh, he wasn't, you know, he didn't come into the Sundown team and just hit the ground running and was a regular from the jump straight. Um, he had to work his way to where he is right now. And that's what you love about one. He put in the work. He paid his dues. He's done everything he's needed to do in football to get the recognition he now uh, has. And um, the consistency of personality, consistency of, of football, everything about him uh, just oozes a consummate professional. And he's like the epitome of what every footballer should strive to be um, in terms of his professionalism, his humility, because um, it's almost like he, he gets embarrassed when you when you lavish him with praises, um, and that that is testament to to who he is as a player. And so, it's hard to hate on Temba Zwani. Anybody who has anything bad to say about Temba Zwani has a bad heart. Uh, I have to say that. Just I'm that guy. Just been in the game for so long. I, I've seen players that. Mm. I'm not serious at training. I've, I've trained with uh, Brian Maloy, who used to be so, like, stupid, if I can use an, if I can use another word, like, you know, crazy at, at training, jokingly, but he steps on the field. He's a totally different player. So he wasn't a good trainer. Yeah, but a good trainer. Come but, 90 yeah, minutes. Surprise as well. Like, you know, that type of player. That used really? To be so, surprise was like that. You know, like, really, like, you know, joking most of the time, but he gets in the game. He just switched on. So if you are a coach now, you're sitting there. There are coaches that want to see players just bleeding at training. And there are players that kind of like kick everybody at training. The game comes, they know where to be found. And now the players that were so like, you know, jolly and like, you know, playful at training, they come out and shine. Zwan is that type of player for me, you know, humble. He just, he doesn't talk. He just does his talk, talking on the field most of the time. And like, you know, if I'm a coach, most of the time in South Africa, once you turn 20, 33, 34, we get rid of you because we're thinking that you're done. Mm. I respect the Italians because they understand that the older you get, the simpler the game becomes for you. You understand that the difficult stuff that you used to do, they're actually simple. And that's what Zwane does on the, in the game. And if the young stars can watch what he does in that number 10 position, they can learn a lot, a, a lot from him. Let's take a quick break, Nadim. I'll get your views and then we'll touch one more subject before we throw forward to the CAF Champions League matches and a couple of PSL matches this weekend. Podcast Friday on Sports Night Amplified with a delay on Metro FM. Powered by SABC Sport. 1843, we're reflecting on the week that was. We touched on Colum Lamba. We touched a little bit on what uh, Hugo Bruce as well as Veli Moto have had to say. Now, Tembazwane, Shigabala. You know, there's a lot that has been said in and about him um, being great, being a generational talent, but also, you know, a lot of people saying, yeah, guys, but 
you know, when you look at his age, and people saying he's the most consistent, you heard what Josta said as well. Mm. Has he really been consistent for the last 10 years? Or has he just been shining in the last 3-4 years now? I think he has been because the praises of Chambers one started when Clive Parker was coaching ACs. That's why he started like him to the likes of the great Dr. Komalo. You feel it did well at ACs. He was so good then. And then he went to Sundowns and became very consistent. From actually, when he was still in Tembisa, Sinkimnisi, before he took him, he was supposed to go to Pirates, then Sundowns, I checked him. When he jo- joined Sundowns, that's, I mean, I remember the first day he joined Sundowns, it was the same time Tico Modis was joined Sundowns, he joined in 2011, same time. He, he, Sundowns, of course, there were so many quality players then. He was unknown. He was not ready, but he went to ACs immediately. Clive Parker said, this is the guy who can who remembers me, who reminds me of Dr. Kumar. I feel even in Sundowns, I mean, the fact that he was once a player of the season, it's been so consistent. It's good to see him in the national team because he's a very, very good player. I mean, he's a nice guy, humble, but in the national team, he's a, in the, on the field, he's a beast. He just become a different animal. We are lucky to have him and he deserves all the praises he's getting because he's just doing well for himself. I mean, uh, scoring two goals like that away in Algeria in front of that hostile crowd. And it's just so talented. Let's move on to a matter that I think it's a lot deeper than what it looks like. Mm. Andy Letlamini has withdrawn from the national team. So Desiree, I can't make it, I can't come. Have a listen to this, then I'll give you a backstory. We've lost players at the last minute, you know. Um, we obviously, minus Andile, Andile has withdrawn through to medical reasons. But I'm really, really happy, you know, that we have Pambanani back, we have Pongeka back, we have Sibuleli back, we have Rafiu Vejani back. That really warms my heart and it's very encouraging because, you know, those are, those are your more experienced players. Andy Letamini, who once was the number one goalkeeper, has withdrawn to medical reasons. She's not injured. The medical reasons, I think, are more mental, particularly at a Banyana Banyana level, where you look at what happened at the World Cup, you look at what's happened with her since. You know, she's basically been dropped to a two or three, even in the national team. I honestly think she needs to retire from the national team <laughs> and <laughs> stop. Deep. Yeah, honestly speaking, Come on, bro. no, she needs to retire up until Desiree is no longer a coach because it's very clear no. that the coach doesn't fancy her. We know she's the best goalkeeper in Africa. Help Sundowns, help Bany- the same Banyana Banyana. Actually, team. Sundowns lost their first game last week in uh, in the Hollywood Bates and Andile was not the goalkeeper. Yeah, I know she has been brilliant. She's so solid. I mean, even Desiree gave Andile a chance in the national team. She did, she was she has been brilliant way before Desiree started coaching. And during Desiree, she assisted Desiree to become the best coach of Banyana Banyana. We saw in the World Cup what we have had. We have not forgotten. We have seen in the recent matches. I honestly think Andile just need to retire from the national team once Desiree is no longer the coach and come back. Because, I mean, what can you say? Because she's the best coach. She's the best goalkeeper. At the same time, the coach is there. Well, also one of the best banana, if not the best banana banana coach, there's yeah, she is. She's the, the best yeah, she's the best banana banana coach. Now we are in a situation where we've got the two best people in that in their position, the best coach and the best goalkeeper. But the best coach doesn't fence Andy for whatever reasons. Obviously, she's she's gonna continue not putting her on the bench and all those kind of things. Just to save sanity, I think she just needs to retire with immediate effect from the national team. Justa? No, but think no she's not injured i can tell you that for free no, was saying was tell you now, she's not that was injured. just an excuse it is uh, it is medical no andile says she's injured andile spoke to her no no, no i didn't say that <laughs> I, i've never said that i've never yeah. said that but i know she's oh, not physically I injured the information okay. i got no she's not physically injured okay she's not okay though okay. medically okay you know what i mean yeah. in the same way that we can sit here and speak about how lyle foster is not okay yeah. he's not oh, injured yeah, you know what i mean how, yeah so, you know, so mentally though i wonder is that banana place good for her i just I, I just hope this is not a personal thing because i've seen these situations in south mm. africa that we lose a lot of talent because of personal reasons yeah like you've got we're talking about the uh, Veli also, we're talking about Tola as well, and, and a lot of other players, uh, Vila as well, a lot of other players that we've lost because of these personal issues. Mm. I just hope that is not the case because this is our number one. We we know what she has done for the national team. Mm. And apparently she didn't play in the, at the World Cup because she was not well and she just had COVID. No, that's, she, what I, that's what I had. No, I she was know. fine. And she was fit. She was fine. So she you're saying fine. that now, the, the, what I had was that like she had like that's COVID. What, that's what everybody what, what, heard. She had what, COVID. Why do we hear these things? No, no, no. No, I, no those things were out there. Yeah, I agree they were with out you. There, right? But she was fine. Andile was fit to play. So okay. so, so who's lying here? So so people are being lied at if in China, number one, in the number one goalkeeper in South Africa, not playing. Because if she yeah. wasn't ready, why would you take her to a World Cup? 
I don't know. I don't know. But, but, but that's play. what we had. But I just hope for this is not happening because at the end of the day, we're gonna be losing one of the. Andy, let spoke the to the to the Sundowns coach. Yeah, yeah. Who confirmed that she was <laughs> she was fit to go no, to no, the no. World Cup? I, yeah. The coach was yeah. Yeah. I spoke to the coach and the coach said Andy was fit to play and was fit at the World Cup. That's bad. Then that's bad. If, if Cherry says he's fit, then, then who are we? So this, this is the problem that I think our mm. our nation has had for such a long time. Like that's why we don't go further in in terms of like us. We we've got so much talent, but mm. I think most because of the jealousy and because of the like, same you know, thing with Jomo Sol and Dr. Kumalo in '98 World Cup. Okay, I mean '98 of course. I don't know who did what to Jomo. Remember did what Jomo to dropped Doctor in picking up us so <laughs> of course. <laughs> Whatever. No, 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 it was not on merit. We know Doctor Doctor was still good then, but Jomo thought you know other guys like Tabo Mukwe better than. I mean, guys, but, guy, like Brian Sibapule was ahead of Dr. Komalo to go to the AFCON. Just to add right. up on what you say, all, all I wish is if the nation could so much talent, if we can nurture talent around, can you imagine where we can go as a nation? Yeah. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mark, I, I hear you, you're itching to get in. Uh, my thing is, who's decided that Andile is the number one? Ooh. Who's number one issue? That's I mean, the thing. I, th- I think it's, yes, this is based, I, this is based when I'm so, on, sorry, so let me let you finish, in fact. So, the, the reality is, I mean, every coach has to choose who their number one is. And maybe Andi, Andile is not Coach Gaze's number one, necessarily, whatever the case mm. may be. Um, we know she was number one at the AFCON. We won the AFCON with her in goal. Um, and then things changed. Uh, I think Dosa is referring to uh, with the World Cup. She, um, she did pick up a terrible bout of COVID that she struggled to recover from. Um, and so leading into the World Cup, she wasn't playing regularly. And, you know, Kaylin played ahead of her. Whether, you know, who should be number one now, we could always argue it. Why this one? Why that one? Ultimately, the coach has to make the decision. It's the same way Coach Hugo Bruce. I mean, the country was livid because um, Temba Zwani and Andile Jali weren't being considered or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, the coach has to make that decision. And the coach has their reasons. We, we're going to be speculating here, but um, for us to just outright say that Bafana's number one, um, you know, should retire, no, ma- retire can from, I, uh, from No, let Mark team. finish. Who's, who's decided, you know, that's the thing. Who's number one issue? Maybe she's our number one. We decided she's the number one keeper in the country, but the coach feels differently. Ultimately, it comes down to the coach. What I want to say, and I have to agree with Jota, I hope that it's not personal. I hope that it's because the, the reality is when it comes to the national team, we want to put our best foot forward. We want the best possible players to represent us as a country. If they deserve to be there on merit, um, and you know they've been doing the business and they are the best in their position, whatever the case may be, then they deserve to be there and they should be playing on merit. Um, okay. Who decides who's number one? Um, that's a story all its own. But um, she is, uh, make no mistake, not having Andina Lamini as part of the squad massive massive blow for us as a nation let's take a quick break where has the time gone I can't believe this. Let's very quickly go to Linda Lamoya. You know him um, on Twitter, of course. Uh, he's uh, the biggest thing there. The little blue bird flies. And this man here, Linda Lamoya, under the banner of Opta Jabu, is the best statistician on Twitter right now. We, as professionals, even use him. It's been a while, my friend. Welcome back. Are you well? I'm good, thanks, Andy. Like, good evening to you and everyone in the studio and the listeners. I don't know what's happened to the time, so let's go straight into it. There's CAF football this uh, uh, weekend. Sundowns are looking to do something under Rolando Mukwena that hasn't been done since Pito Musimani. They face Yanga. What do you have on that game? So, yes, Andy, like, we have that. It's the 10th time that a PSL side is traveling to Tanzania for a CAF competition game. And in those nine previous games, only two teams have won there before. That Santos in 2003, four and Sundowns in 97, 98. Wow! That's how far back PSL teams have been struggling to win in Tanzania. So it's hard to win in Tanzania for South African teams. Indeed, it's hard to win in Tanzania for South African teams. Who are some of the other teams that have gone to Tanzania? So now we there are different teams in Tanzania. Of course, this is the fourth time a PSL side travels specifically to face Yanga in Tanzania. And none of them have actually won against Yanga when they go away then. Hmm. They've never been come out of the clean sheet against Yanga if the PSL side goes to Tanzania to face Yanga. Mining Rangers in 98, Sundowns in 2001, and also Marumo Gallants in 2023, who lost 0 2. Let's go to another one in the PSL. I'm going to pick one of the three games that said we're going to be speaking about um, Cape Town City versus Kaiser Chiefs. For me, that seems like such a big game. What can you tell us about it? 
Well, the first thing, Angela, is we will be there. We're actually going to watch that one live tomorrow. Awesome. That's Can't wait for the live you. tweets. It's Eric Tinkler's favorite game. He's won 12 games against Kaiser Chiefs in his coaching career, more than he has against any other opponent ever since he started coaching. In fact, he's actually won the last four in a row. What? And no coach. <laughs> no. <laughs> the last four in a row against Chiefs. Kaiser Chiefs are about Gonzalez will be there tomorrow. <laughs> Hold on, I want to hear this. And no coach? No coach has ever won five in a row against Chiefs. Tinkler's four in a row is already a record. That's how much he loves this game. So he holds the record at four. If he wins tomorrow, it's going to be five. And he's won 12 against the time he's played against Kaza Chiefs. He's beat them more than any other team. So Tinkler beats Chiefs. All correct, Andy. Listen, Opta, we'll have a lot more time next week. We're firing Josta. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's at Opta Jabu. Mark, I don't know what's happened to the time, but enjoy Cape Town. Appreciate it. Always love having him. Just normally we take calls. We take Marawile. What about the podcast? <laughs> Where do people catch your podcast? Um, on um, uh, YouTube, you can find me there. Isn't just a game, and you can find it on Spotify as well. Uh, so, isn't just a game. That's all. You just punch in. And on Instagram, also you're very active. What's what, what's your handle? On Instagram is Just Atlanta Official. As you know, there's like a lot of fake Just Atlantas out there. So, Just Atlanta Official on uh, Instagram. Nadim. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what happened to the time. I'm sorry, man. People were yeah. supposed to call in and uh, mm. rubbish you as usual. Not today. No, they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Um, on a weekend such as this one, we don't want to even take an extra second because we know you want the music. And the music is coming. Hey, we have two pretty boys who replaced <laughs> one with another. Hey, normally, Ululo, no naked. Mind you, Ululo, Muni. Uh, you know? Uh, Lulu, yeah, I'm a sinner. Lulu Moon. Are you good? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Listen to that. A room full of guys and you're prettier than you guys yeah, know. It's time to end the show. Yeah. Are you good? Always great, man. It's Good Friday, family time. Everyone is happy at home. So what more can I ask? But when I'm out to family time, it means no fifth. Because you have like 20 brothers and 15 sisters. You know what? The craziest thing is this weekend, we celebrating another baby. My younger brother. Um, I think it's like his fourth or fifth. Like, yo, guys, I'm left behind. <laughs> eh? I've still got one. And We're not a stool to show. Imagine. I'm not a stool to show. I'm not a stool to show.